definitely one. La lungs, lungs liver, kidneys. liver, kidneys. That's it. Now, you can do without a heart for a minute, a couple of minutes. A machine will, will, will do the work for you. Your lungs, a machine will do the work for you. But if you don't get a heart to replace the machine, or your heart's not charged back up, because sometimes when they're doing open heart surgery, they'll stop your heart, let the machine do the pumping for you, and then they've got a couple of minutes where they need to get it going again. And they can do that with your lungs. If they have to do something with the lungs, they can have the bypass, and the lungs will take a breather for a second, and they can do whatever, and then they have to get the lungs going again or put another lung in place. So those are temporary shutdowns that you can have. Your liver has the ability to um, regenerate itself. It can, if, if it's cut, if it's, if it's messed up, if everything else is okay in the body, the liver can regenerate itself or parts of itself, depending on how healthy the rest of the body is. You have two kidneys and you don't need both kidneys. If everything is working well, you can operate with part of a kidney for a good while. There's many of individuals who've donated one of their healthy kidneys to someone and they have, they've lived extended lives, normal lives with that one kidney because that kidney was in good shape. So Allah gives us the ability for the kidneys, for the liver to compensate for problems. Our heart doesn't have that capacity. If something goes wrong with the heart, we have a short period of time when we need to fix it before it's too late. Our lungs don't have that capacity. Now you can operate with one lung if it's really healthy but you're gonna need some assistance because you need that oxygen exchange, gas exchange. I didn't say anything about the brain. There's one place in the Quran where the brain is mentioned as a word, meaning the physical brain. The rest of it is about the brain functioning. And that one place is um, talking about decapitating someone, cutting the brain off to cause them not to survive. So because as soon as we lose the brain's function, even if it's for a split second, this person is gone. There is no regeneration. There is no jump starting with the paddles. Brain function ceasing is what they officially call brain dead. And that's when they sign the, birth, the death certificate. So that's not something that we can do without. So now the heart, we can do without for a hot second and the lungs. So. Scientists say that all five of those organs are important and vital, but when you're in peril, and I'm looking at these three roots right now as I'm talking about this, when you're in peril, your body redirects all of its forces to those three organs, the brain, the heart, and the two lungs. I'm sorry, legs, feet, toes, you're gonna have to wait. I know you need some oxygen, but you are going to have to wait Fingers, hands, I'm sorry. Even kidneys, stomach, pancreas, spleen, liver, I'm sorry. Until we stabilize these three parts of the body, everything else is going to have to wait. Now, what are they waiting for? Oxygen, which you need for energy. They're waiting for nutrients, which includes your vitamins. And there's these things that we call macromolecules. Those who've heard me speak before I've talked about the carbohydrates, the lipids, and the fats. So we need those every day, all day long. But if there's something going on and the brain's in peril, the heart's in peril, the lungs are in peril, the other organs are going to have to wait. Now if all three are in peril, the lungs and the heart are gonna to have to wait because the brain's about to get it all. Because if that stops, the body is brain dead. And a young man, a beautiful Muslim young man who was born with a medical problem and for the 16 years of his life, he did more in his life than many adults do who reach old age, feel old age, as the Quran refers to. But when it was his time, his brain was struggling. He had been without oxygen for about 30 minutes, and his brain was struggling. And it was still showing signs of functioning, but it, the signs were slim, were, were light. When I went to see him, and I kissed him on his forehead. His forehead felt like he had 107 temperature. And they were putting cold towels on his forehead. And now me having the science background, I knew what that meant. His body was sending, 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 sending resources because his brain was struggling so hard. 
so hard to survive. And they, did, they cared about everything else, but they were really worried about this to make sure that this was getting what it needed. So that was a sign that his body was trying and sending. And they took care of the rest of his body with machines and you know, all of that. But his body needed his brain to kick in. So I want to reference again these three parts. And as I talk about these three radicals that make up a verb, I think most of the verbs, these three parts, it's these three organs that are essential for us to be who we are. Essential for us to be who we are. Now, if we look at it from an Islamic standpoint, from a Quranic standpoint, from even Imam Warthadi Muhammad's discussions with us about the soul, the nefs, and we look at it the way he talked to us about the, the job of the heart. It's not just the physical pumping, but it is where your essence is. It's where your character is. If we look at it from that standpoint, we see how important, and the Quran is filled with references to this. We see the importance of the heart. So if the heart is an important being, why would not we want to make sure that we are taking care of it physically. We take care of it spiritually. Why aren't we taking care of it physically? I did all of this. Let me go back to this one. So in order for us to do that, we need to make sure we're giving it what it needs. We're giving the brain what it needs, and we're giving the lungs what they need. And if we take care of them, they will help take care of the rest of our body. Now that doesn't mean we forget the toes and we forget the fingers and all of the stuff leading to those vital organs. Yes, we do need to take care of them. But we can help the heart, the lungs, the brain out by taking care of the entire body at the same time. We take care of the body, the body takes care of us. I call those three letter, four letters sometimes, Arabic words, roots. If we think about our roots, the roots of a plant, our biological, genetic roots, we see a foundation. We see a platform. As I said earlier, the Quran gave us these, these gives us this, this new knowledge in the form where it connects to the platform that we already have inside of us, our schema. So if we look at the roots, the roots are connecting to that schema that's already there. And they're helping to strengthen that schema. So what's the root of what's inside of us? I talked about the spiritual side, but what about the physical side? Well, inside of us physically, outside of us too, there's atoms. And those atoms connect to each other and they eventually make these larger structures we call molecules. Those molecules make bigger molecules that then make stuff that helps us do what we do. You are looking at a bunch of molecules right now. I am looking at a bunch of molecules right now. That's what we physically are. But Allah has aligned these molecules so well that we have life where this doesn't have life. Still molecules, but we have life. We make decisions. We pray, we, 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 we make our shahada, we pray, we fast, we, we, we go through all of these things because we know the benefit of it. It's not ritualistic at all. That sun makes that plant turn in a certain direction by instinct. We're not instinctive beings, or we're not supposed to be. So here we are with these atoms that bond together to make up these structures that gives us this ability to be living and thinking beings. So what is it that these, which atoms are they, number one, and what are they making? The root of all living forms is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. There's some other stuff, phosphorus and potassium and magnesium and selenium, and I could just go on and on and on. We even have arsenic that we need. Okay, a tiny bit. Don't go home and start sweetening your family's food with arsenic. No, no, tiny, itty bitty, tiny bit. And you get it through the fools. You don't need extra to go, go buy it. Hopefully somebody will write you up if you, they see you buying any. No, that's not what we do with that. So, um, but we, we need tiny amounts, we call them trace elements, of some other things. And if we get large amounts, they could be considered to be poisonous. Now, too much carbon can be poisonous to us. 
much water is poisonous, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Too much oxygen, too much hydrogen, and too much hydrogen and oxygen together, water, is poisonous to us. Too much of anything is what I'm trying to say, is poisonous to us. So we want to do everything. Allah gives us instructions on balance throughout the Quran, as it's mentioned several times, of balance, balancing, balancing. We need to do things in moderation and balance it out. So those atoms come together to make up this list that you see on the screen and in your packages. Here I'm telling you what they're made up of. And if you notice under minerals, I have things like lithium, um, there's boron, fluorine, um, aluminum, silicon. Silicon has the same characteristics as carbon, except for one factor is a little heavier. It will bond just like carbon bonds. Carbon is what makes your protein. Carbon makes your carbohydrates. Carbon makes your lipids. Fats belongs to the lipid group. Carbon makes all of those. And if I had too much silicon in my body, it would replace the carbon. And instead of me having DNA, for example, I'm looking at cancer or some other weird malformation because carbon's in the DNA molecule. And the silicon could do that if it was forced. So we need tiny amounts of these things, again, not getting too much because it interferes with the normal balance that Allah has already put into place. So those things that you see under where it says water down to minerals, we call those the micromolecules. And then those macromolecules are your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your lipids. And they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, those three at the bottom. So we need every last one of those substances that's on that page every single day. Now, I don't know you, me, I've never gone to the store and need some carbon. I need some nitrogen, some oxygen, some hydrogen. Instead, I go to the store and I say I need some carrots and some mangoes and some broccoli and some, okay, I don't do beef liver, ugh. Um, some tomato juice, some butternut, squash. What am I getting if I eat all of those? How many of you are looking at my chart? What am I getting? Okay. What am I getting if, thank you. What am I getting if I'm eating all of those things I just called? I'm going to call them off again. Some carrots, some mangoes, some broccoli. Yucky beef liver. Tomato juice, butternut squash. What am I getting? Vitamin A. Vitamin A. By eating those particular products, I am getting some vitamin A. And it's the vitamin A that's going to do what for me? What's the benefits of vitamin A? What's the deficiency if I don't get enough of it? I get night blindness if I don't eat it. But if I do eat it, what is it giving me? Improves eye function. What about the one right before that? Or be after retinol. It's, that's the group that it belongs to is retinol. Antioxidant. Antioxidant. I said, when I was talking about those verbs, I said that they were made up of three or four letters, and then I used the word radicals. And you got those radicals that are bonded together to make the word. Suppose the radical is free. If not the word. If I got a B floating around, back, that's not, that's not baked. That's not uh, B like in the name, in. That's not the word. That's just the B floating around. That can mess up the sentence. Suppose I have an oxygen floating around that's not connected to anything. I have a free radical. Yes, do that again with your hands. Yes, oxygen with a hydrogen and a negative charge, it's called a hydroxyl, is extremely volatile. And if it bumps into another structure, it breaks it. And if you break your root, your foundation, you, any of you live in a home where the foundation's cracked? Or you've seen it or heard it? Of, of it, the whole house could fall. You get warning signs, but the house could fall. You don't want free radicals in your body, so the antioxidants get rid of the oxygen free radical. So if you're eating the carrots and mangoes and broccoli and beef liver and tomato juice and butternut squash, you're minimizing the chances of free radicals being in your body. Now, how do I get a free radical? Stress. Stress. Stress comes from a lot of different places. 
One of them is this. Another one is this. What am I supposed to do with that that you just sent down my and to me? You just gave me some stuff to chew and swallow and process that I don't recognize. Never seen this before. Don't have the structure to be able to deal with it. That stresses your system out. That looks like broccoli, but it's got a batter around it. And it's full of oil. And you call it tempura. The heat as you fried it restructured the bonds of the molecules that were in there and they are not vitamin A anymore. Or anything else that was good in that broccoli. And what do you want me to do with this? I can't use it for your eyes. By the way, you're about to get some night blindness. I can't use it to balance out your free radicals. You might be pushing towards cancer. So how do I avoid this? I make sure that whatever I eat is what Allah has instructed me to eat because he doesn't make any mistakes. Scientists, uh, mm, let's mix. Yeah, yeah, let's make this. Yeah, Ooh, we got this, oh, this sweetener. Yeah, this works really well. Oops. Recall. Uh, number one, it causes diabetes. And number two, it causes pancreatic cancer. And the pancreas is the thing that's having problems. Is why diabetes is there in the first place. Now you don't give me cancer in that same organ that's already struggling? Seriously. But well, we didn't know. But Allah knows. Even while they're trying to struggle and figure it out. So he's given us instructions on stuff to do. And things to do. And he's given us signs to make it clear what those instructions are. So by reading these signs, we can see that's not cool. Um, I don't think I did this last, I, I did this last year at the beginning of um, my talk um, last um, first Sunday in January. I took some spinach. Those of you who were here, help me out with this if you remember what happened. I took some spinach. I had some raw spinach and I had some other spinach. And I took them out of the container and I laid them side by side. Can anybody tell me what it looked like? Nobody. Okay. The spinach that I had that was raw was a certain shade of green. Have any of you seen raw spinach before? Hopefully, yes. The answer is yes. Yes? Okay. Okay. Hopefully. Everybody should say yes on that one. But it's okay. Some of you may never have seen it. The spinach that I took out was the color of an olive. Olive green. Of a container. What spinach is olive green? What color is spinach when it's cooked? A darker green, okay, it's a dark green. Okay, it was the color of spinach that's been cooked. So if you can imagine mustards and spinach and, um, I'm not sure, yeah, turnips, turnips turn that color. Yeah, so the greens that are cooked. And I put the two side by side. And I didn't tell everybody what I had, I just said, what do you see? No, oh, that's spinach, that's raw spinach, that's like for your salads. And that one's cooked, but it wasn't wasn't. I took it out the bottom of a fresh salad bag. It was rotten. It was rotten. It's the same color as cooked. Same consistency as cooked. Now what happens to a piece of spinach that's going bad? Decomposers are breaking it down. So when you put your spinach in that water, it's breaking those hydrogen bonds apart just like a decomposer does when it's eating. And you're eating spinach that's been broken down to the point that it's lost its texture. Its integrity is spinach. So when it gets into your stomach, the stomach's like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? Because it doesn't recognize it. Now your stomach's got some chemicals down there. It's called pepsin and some hydrochloric acid and some of the enzymes and stuff like that that's down there processing stuff. And so it's going to get distorted anyway. But if it's already distorted before it gets in there, now it's going to get distorted even more. So by the time it gets to your small intestines, where it's about to go into your blood, your body's like, no. I don't recognize this. And all stuff that doesn't get recognized stays in the blood. The cells take the, oh yeah, I need some of that and some of that. Oh, there's vitamin A. I need that. Yeah, the retina, yeah I need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it doesn't take the stuff that doesn't recognize. 
cells are smart. So then it stays in the blood. And, oh, the liver. We got a thing that cleans the blood. Blood goes through the liver, cleans it out. Liver's like, you taking this with you, right? You know, that's going to stay with you. And what am I supposed to do with this? It's your problem. Blood goes on this business doing this thing. So that's when you two, three, five, ten years old. But now you hit 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and you're still eating your spinach like that. And it's still going through your filter like it was before. Now, the liver's like, there's no more room in here. You got to go somewhere else. So it gets caught someplace else in the body. And it starts messing up some other stuff. Oh, I didn't tell you what the liver did to it. The liver stores stuff. It stores stuff. But it stores in only one format. F-A-T. And the spinach has the right ingredients to make fat. It's not fat, but it can make it. It's called carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, because that's all that's in fat. And the liver had some protein, but it got distorted. It had some, some carbohydrates, but it got distorted. So the carbon and the hydrogen and oxygen that was in the, the protein and that was in the carbohydrates is just being rearranged and making some fat. And that's no big deal if you're eating it like that once or twice. But think about the buildup over years. So our body is in a, a battle trying to struggle to get things done while it's also trying to battle with the stuff that we're doing to it. So here I am. I'm eating my spinach, my green peas, my sunflower seeds, my soy milk, my tomatoes, and my watermelon. What am I getting? Vitamin B1. There's a thing called the B complex. The B complex. So I'm getting my vitamin B1 by eating those things. And I'm not going to go down this list. You all can read. And then I'm going to, inshallah, you take this with you. And those who didn't get one, I'll make sure I give it to you. So I'm, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. There's, there's vitamins. I got every single vitamin here for you. I have, and this is not, oh, I'm going to get this in a week. No, you need this every day. Every day. Now you got some options here. There's, you know, you don't have to eat one thing. I really don't like the way that tastes. I'm not eating that. Okay, that's cool. That's your choice. But Allah doesn't force anything on us. Even the religion's not forced on us. He gives us choices. You can make choices. I don't want any more vitamin A. I'm done with that. I don't mind being blind. I'm cool. That's your choice. That's so your choice. And somebody else will be your chauffeur or your cook or your whatever. That's your choice. But I've given you all the way down to the minerals. So there's a page that I wanted to, I'm expediting this, just speeding it up, but I want you to go to the last page, which has potassium, selenium, and sodium. I want to talk about these three. They just happen to be the last three, but I think I can talk about all of them like this, but I just wanted to harp on these three. Potassium is needed by the body to help get things in and out of cells. Potassium in our body has what we call a positive charge. So it's called K plus. K is the symbol for potassium and it's positively charged. So in our bodies, we need K plus. And we get potassium from our green leafy vegetables. And we also get potassium from things like our sweet potatoes. Our bananas are one of the most powerful potassium filled food in, on the planet. Who brought those bananas today, by the way? Somebody left some bananas in the room? This is a hero. It's a hero. Okay, alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you all for, for telling her. Thank you. Um, potassium, they, 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 they're just super rich. Super rich in potassium, bananas are. So what do they do? Well, they help to maintain blood pressure. Um, potassium is doing that because of the way that it works with the nerves. It keeps the nerves, it keeps cells sending signals the way that they're supposed to. So the blood pressure is maintained a lot better because our stress level is down and some other things are happening that keeps the blood pressure calm and in balance. It, ma it maintains balance in our body, including our fluids. And if you've got things you shouldn't have in your body, the potassium can help move them in and out. It's kind of a, it's own internal detoxer. So if your potassium level is cool, that's great. It's great. And potassium is in so many different things. This is just a teeny tiny snapshot of what it's in. That's if everything is working right. <laughs> if you have some problems with your blood, flow. Maybe there's blockage. 
hearts not pumping like it should, blockage, or anything affecting the blood flow. Your potassium could build up, back up, get over, leave populated in certain areas. It's not cool. Because if you have too much potassium, then the nerves get confused and they start misfiring and sending signals wrong. That affects your thinking, 